So a lot of times, instead of starting just a single Docker container, you want to start up multiple and have them be able to connect with each other. So in this video, we're going to be using a tool called Docker Compose to help us out and to start both a Postgres and a Node.js server and have the Node.js server connect to Postgres. So we're going to start by creating a Docker Compose.yaml file. So this is going to be the configuration of how to set up these containers. Then we're going to add retry logic so our Node.js server can connect to our database. And if it's not up yet, we can retry that. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how we can start up and shut down all these containers. So let's go ahead and start with the Docker Compose file. So I'm going to create a Docker Compose.yaml. And this file is where we're going to set up all the Docker Compose things or containers that we want to start up. Now, before we get started on this, I should mention that Docker Compose is a separate installation from Docker. So go ahead and install that if you haven't already. And at the top here, I'm going to say version and specify the version of Docker Compose that I want to use, or at least that the configuration file is going to be. The latest is 3.7, so I'm going to use that. And then I'm going to say services. And here I'm going to list all the containers that I want to create, and I can give them a name. So the first one that I want to create is a Postgres container. I'm going to call it DB, and then I can specify the image, which is going to be Postgres. Now here I can pass in all the flags or the commands that I was passing in if I was just going to start a Docker container with Docker run. So here I put three environment files or environment variables, and then I create a volume. And I can do the same over here in the Docker Compose. So I can say environment, and then I can say uh, create my variable. So I'm going to copy the Postgres one, and then so the name of the environment variable, colon, and then I'm going to put the value. So here's going to be Postgres, and then we can do the same thing for the user. And then lastly, the DB. And then we can also create a volume. I'm going to say volumes. And then I can say dash, and then I'm going to say PG data, and I'm going to do it in the current directory. So it's going to create a current uh, folder in this current directory called PG data, and that's where it's going to store the data. And I can keep the same path over here. So it should be PG data colon, and then the path inside the container. And I can get rid of that backslash at the end there. Okay, so as it is right now, we have this container here. Um, it's going to be a DB service. It has the image using the Postgres image. We pass it three environment variables so it knows to start up with the Postgres user and password and then also create a database called Stripe example. And then we set up a volume that way it persists the data. And I changed it so it's going to be in just this local directory. It's going to store the data. All right. Um, and then lastly, I can access or I can say the ports that I want to start in. So here I can say I want 5432 and inside the container as well. All right, and there's a lot more uh, basically values you can pass in here if you want to, uh, but we're going to keep it bare bones for now. And then here, the second service is going to be my Node.js server. So I'm going to call this web, and the image is going to be the same thing that I've been using. So if I look at my Docker build command, I've been naming this image Stripe example. So I'm going to copy that and use that image. And then here I'm just going to say ports and specify that I want it to start on port 4000. And inside that container, it's also running on port 4000. Uh, and then lastly, I'm going to add one thing to my web container here. I'm going to say depends on, and I'm going to say dash db. So what this does here is it starts up the database container first, then it's going to start up my uh, Stripe, my Node.js server here second. Now what's going to happen is it's going to take a second for the database here to start up uh, and the website's going to start up as well and it's going to try connecting to the database and it's going to not be able to connect because the database isn't quite up yet. So we need to act, we need to add some retry logic in our code. So if I come over here to the index file, um, I, here's where my connection is. Um, so here's where I try to connect, and if it fails, um, it basically just crashes. So here I'm going to add a try catch. And we're going to have an error here, and I'm just going to console.log the error. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say retries, and let's say we give it five retries. And while there's still some retries left, we're going to loop. 
So here we're going to just loop and try to keep connecting. I'm going to say break if we're able to create the connection here. Otherwise, we're going to say catch. And if we want to, and we're going to minus one from the retries, and I want to console.log how many retries are left. Retries left. And then at the very bottom here, I don't want to just call create connection really fast over and over. I want to sleep for a sec couple seconds or wait um, for like a second or so. Um, to do this, what I can do is I can say await new promise and I'm gonna say resolve and we're gonna say set timeout and we'll say five, let's say five seconds. Um, yeah, five seconds. So what I did here is I just set a timeout and I wait for the promise to finish when the timeout is done and I said 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds. Um, so wait for that to finish and then I'll retry again. Um, so that's the retry code that we're gonna use for this. Um, you can also use something like this. So they have a whole page talking about the startup order on the Docker docs if you go to this URL. Um, and it talks about, it recommends putting it in your application yourself. Um, put in the application code, the retry logic, which is what we just did. But you can also use stuff like there's scripts, for example, the wait for it script, and you can go check that out. You can use that as well if you'd prefer, instead of putting the logic here. Anyway, so that'll try to connect. The other thing is to talk about what is the, how do we actually connect to this Docker instance over here? So how do I connect to this Docker container, this Postgres instance? Uh, well, we don't use the host localhost. So we name this thing DB here. Uh, and what Docker is going to do is actually allow us to access the Postgres container using the host called DB because we named it DB there. So I created a separate ORM config for this, which I just called ormconfig.docker.json. And this is where I'm going to store basically my connection details for the uh, Docker instance. And you'll notice for the host, I chose DB here. So it's going to connect to the Postgres DB, the host is going to be DB port 5432, and then the username, password, and database, the environment variables that we chose. And then in my Docker file for this container, um, I just copy over the ORM config, and then I can change this to be ORM config.json. So I copy over the Docker .json file for the ORM config and rename it to just the ORM config so it uses that. Uh, so that's that's what I'm using to connect to the database. Now if I were to rename this something else, like I call this Postgres, then my host over here in the ORM config, I would rename the host to Postgres. But it is DB, so we'll connect that. All right, so that is all set up. We added the retry logic. Let's show how you can start up these containers now. So I just made changes to my uh, my my file or my code there. So I'm gonna have to rebuild the image. So I'm gonna run the uh, Docker build on this this image from my Node.js server, and then we can go ahead and start this up. Uh, so like I said, we're gonna need to have Docker Compose installed, and that's a separate install. We can do dash v. Currently using 1.22. Um, and so I'm currently in this server folder here, and in my server folder, I have the docker compose file. So I can say docker compose up, and I'm gonna be using the dash D flag. What that does is allows me to start up these containers in the background. And you'll notice it talks about it creating them or recreating them, uh, if you've already created them before. And here I'm gonna say docker container ls, uh, and I can see that I have two containers started up, and uh, let's run that command again. It's a little longer. Yep, there we go. So I can see the container IDs and I can see the names of the two that I started up. You also notice it's created a new folder over here called PG data. So that's the data for the uh, Postgres. Uh, I can run Docker compose logs and I can see the logs for this. Um, so here I can see that uh, the DB that's our Postgres. You can see it actually took a little bit to start up. Um, we can see some logs for it. And at the bottom, we can see our web logs. So we can see the error, it was unable to connect. It told us for there's four retries left. Waited a little bit, tried again, and then it was able to connect. So just because our database is up doesn't mean it's ready to accept connections. So it takes a few tries.
So you can play with the retry logic over here as well if you want to increase the number of retries or increase the number of seconds it waits. But now it is up at localhost 4000, so I can go to that if I want to. Um, and here we go. And now I can see my schema over here. We're able to run that. I can get a registers true. We can log in with this user. Um, and so that all works. So that is how you can start up containers with Docker Compose. Uh, how do we shut them down now? So I can say Docker Compose down, and that's going to just stop both those containers. So that's pretty much an introduction to Docker Compose right there. So we started, um, or we declared what we wanted it to do, or what containers to start up in our Docker Compose.yaml file. We're able to connect to the database instance because Docker set up basically a network that we could access, and we use the DB as our host because we use that there. Uh, we also set up a volume here to store our, our Postgres data, PG data, and we can add that to our git ignore because we don't want that to show up on GitHub. Um, and then other than that, we use Docker Compose up to start the containers and Docker Compose down to shut them down. And then I used logs to show the logs for Docker Compose. Um, and there's a lot more commands you can use for this. This is just an introduction to Docker Compose. It has a lot of cool things you can do with it. So I recommend giving it a try.